What's up everybody, it's me King Alpha, hope everybody's doing great. So I know it's been a really long time since I've done videos, again, um, I have a couple of excuses I guess you could say. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, just really quick, I am going to be having a baby. Um, my son is going to be coming this year, hopefully in June. So, um, I mean, it's something I definitely should have announced maybe in another video and I can just announce it that way and showcase, you know, just a simple video of that. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to say that's the reason why I know I'm mixing content here, but I've been playing a lot of Bannerlord on Twitch and everything. And it's been so fun ever since there's been these two mods that are just like literally a must have on Bannerlord. And it's just been amazing. However, we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about workshops. Now, I know a lot of people have started playing on console, playing Bannerlord, and also there's people are still playing Bannerlord on PC. Now, I'm playing on PC and I have mods, but there's no mods that interfere with the fact of like how money works or anything like that. No cheat code, etc. So everything is basically um, done from me just, you know, doing whatever. Um, now, in terms of workshops, there's these workshops that I've made that it's actually been insane to the point that I've been able to have about 500 plus um, gold return on them. And I know a lot of people do enjoy using caravans and everything. However, these workshops honestly have just been so, so strong and so important to my overall uh, finance daily, uh, daily change. And as you guys can see, you know, my total expenses are pretty high and my total income is pretty you know, pretty low, not insane, but you know, I don't like to cheese and grab every thief and all that type of stuff. Um, so I like to just more or less work around the fact of me using, um, you know, selling, you know, weapons I, that I come from war and this and that. So a lot of my passive income is actually coming from my workshops, which is really, really nice. Um, and it's a good chunk of my actual daily exchange. So I'm going to show you guys the workshops now. Of course, workshops do change in terms of prosperity, etc. Um, but I just figured to show you guys how insane some of these things are and how you can get this, but it really depends on what type of campaign you are playing. Now, I have the wine press theory, I guess, because wine press has been giving me so much in return, as you guys can see, 740 from Prevan, 625 from Dunglass. 511 from Marinif and 545 from Sion. I'm going to call it Sion. Um, and now we have Amor as well that's doing pretty good and Prevand as well over here, uh, another city. Now, of course, this is later down the stage. My character, I play Sandbox, so my character is about like 34 years old and everything. So cities progress over time and they do have better uh, prosperity over time. So obviously, the better the prosper uh, prosperity of the city the more your workshops will most likely make money depending on which workshops you actually have there. Um, I've had, sometimes I put workshops in Marinif and even though Marinif is a really prosperous city, it actually does not produce that much uh, money depending on what type of workshop I do. So um, just to give you a quick uh, preview of how I really first look off on doing workshops and everything is I usually go to settlements and I usually immediately toggle prosperity. Um, Dunglass is number one, Sion, Prevand, and then Marinith. So I do have workshops in all of these cities. Now, are they the most prosperous in the entire kingdom? I'm not fully sure because I have to go and check the other ones, but I'm at war and stuff. So I don't know if these are the most prosperous cities. However, in my case, I am Batania and we are taking over Vlandia's area and everything. So I know my workshops would be safe here. Um, one thing I want to suggest to like, I guess any players that are basically trying to understand maybe in the early game, um, where's the best, like what's the best workshop to do or where, how do you, um, like which, what's your first workshop you should do and how you should place it and everything. Because the thing is, if you guys don't know, workshops can be destroyed if, um, let's say I'm Batania and I put a workshop in, uh, Ostien, 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 I'm okay. I'm, I'm messing up the names, but anyways, let's say I put a, <clears throat> a workshop in revolt and then Matanya goes to war with Landia. It destroys your whole workshop and you actually don't get the money back or anything like that. If I'm correct. So you just wasted what, like maybe 20, 30 K, um, just on a workshop, just for it to be destroyed. Once your faction goes to war with that, those people. So obviously what you really want to do is make sure that you put workshops in places that 
won't be destroyed and won't um more or less like hurt your like you won't have to worry about oh no i have to build it again or oh, i have to wait till peace um as you guys can see we own a lot of the map and everything uh personally you know this is a big uh, campaign etc but <clears throat> nonetheless how workshops work and i've noticed this is that workshops more or less go around obviously your uh you know the the little villages that connect to the the city uh so pervan has one wine one grapes here so it does actually have a good um you know wine press here so you can actually make money off of this however the fact that there's actually grapes over here um and, and everything it actually helps out with the money as well because your wine is going to be trading to also multiple cities and this is my thought of how it works i could be very wrong so if i am wrong just please tell me um but I've been looking at it, and this is how most of my workshops have been working, is that I look at whether uh, like cities around kind of have the resource that is more or less produced a lot in the area. And then I make a workshop there for it, and I just, I've just been making money. And as you guys can see, um, oh, wrong tab, as you guys can see, Prevand is at 740. You know, uh, Dunglass, all of these stuff are, are really, really high. And it's really, really nice. Now, if you look, if you look at, for example, Dunglass, Marinif, and Sion, all of them have loads of, of grapes. So you can really do basically wine presses in each of the cities and make a nice passive income. This is really huge if you're starting a Batanian campaign, or even if you're doing a campaign, maybe like as the Southern Empire, the Kuziites, and you want to have a faction you're not going to go go to war with. For a while, you know, you build some wine presses here, and I tell you this, you will make very, very nice income uh, passively in the early game if you can actually get your workshops working here. And I think that's probably one mistake I made in the early game is that um, I didn't do workshops immediately. Yes, they did cost a lot, but I also did have a lot of money as well. And I was doing I was using my money for other things instead of having this nice passive income of you know i i believe the passive income for my workshops right now is three thousand three hundred and sixty nine now this is obviously including the other two workshops i have as well which is omor and the other one in pervan but if you take those out i'm basically making about 2.7k um on top of whatever i am making from these other two just from workshops and this is awesome and it's not like i do have high trade i don't have high trade there's no like oh my workshops do better or they produce more etc i believe you know you can get workshops to do better or something like that but yeah overall personally without even having trade high or anything like that my shops are doing great now i i will reiterate this it does depend on the city's prosperity. If the prosperity of the city is going up, like all of these are, which is 4.4, this one's going up by 3.2, this one's going up by 4.3, all of your workshops, if you put the correct one, like grapes, is going to do really, really good. The workshops I've noticed, even though there's grain around, I've noticed beer really, I don't know if they nerfed it or something, but beer workshops really do not do what it used to do. Um... I know some places are better with beer, like if you do it at uh, Sanala or Ascar, usually grain and bre brewery is pretty good. But overall, I'll say that, like it just, it really, really sucks to do a, um, like a brewery here. It just really, I was making like 100 to 200, which just isn't worth. It's not worth the, you know, 20 to 30K you are going to be uh, putting in to actually buy a workshop here. Um, so I'm just suggesting, guys, I think... The wine press theory is like amazing here. Um, again, if you're playing as Vlandia, this will suck for you if you're doing this, like if you're doing wine presses in Batania. So be careful with that. But wine press and Pervan, for example, will work and will make you a lot of income because Pervan is probably one of the most prosperous cities in Vlandia itself. Typically, there's three, like a couple of steps to it. For one, you look at the city prosperity. Two, you look at the city um, and what it produces around, at least within a nice circle. I always do these circles. So, for example, I, I have an olive press in Pervan, and there's actually olives here. So, I just put, you know, an olive press here, and it's actually taking the olives there, etc. So, it's trading, and it's pretty good. Um, sometimes, funny enough, I know it's low right now in terms of the uh, 360, but sometimes I've seen it actually at 5-something. 
So it really just depends on obviously all the caravans, if you're at war, etc. Um, but again, I think any city, if you really just look at what's around um, and what you can trade, you just really need to go for the most prosperous cities um, because those are the cities that will get you the most money. And then just go around what exactly they do produce and everything. It's going to be awesome. I think a lot of people, I'm, I'm hoping this little guide for workshops really do help uh because it's just one of those things where it's like a neat trick to know that dunglass marinif and Sion, you can put three wine presses there and make a very nice passive income early on especially if you're not going to be at war with the batania if you're sturgia again you got to be careful because you do go to war with batania a lot if you're vlandia you do go to war with batania a lot and then if you're the western empire you do sometimes go to war with the um you know, or the, the Northern or Western Empire, whatever, you do go to war with uh, Batania. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this is just something I wanted to really show because of the fact that, like, I'm making such good passive income off of these wine presses. It's amazing. And Linden Wave, uh, uh, Wavery in Omor is doing really, really well as well, which I, d I took that off of this. This produces flax. My, my actual Omor doesn't. It only produces grain and um, fish. But I took the flax from here, and now I'm actually making nice, good income from producing linen. So, anyways, guys, I hope this guide in, uh, more or less helps you out. Um, because, personally, I think it's such a cool concept of the workshops. I've never liked caravans, but personally, workshops are always something to, like, learn. Um, and now that I know this, I can do this for future campaigns. Just put, um, you know, workshops in there, and I'll be fine. You know, it's nice, easy passive income, especially... Now in the early game, you can um, basically get, uh, what is it, like horses and sell them off really early and all that type of stuff. So there's really early uh, game stuff that you can make money. So I hope this helps console players. I hope this also helps any PC player that is, you know, struggling with more or less like um, workshop income and all that type of stuff. Peace, guys. Have a good one. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.